Blessings, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? My name is Sister Cece. And today we are talking to one of the merchants that we interviewed um, before uh, in a group setting. We're going to interview her today uh, on her own from Yaz Approved Apparel, which is a mall for um, our fellow Israelite brothers and sisters to shop amongst one another. We're always talking about buy black, but we're going a bit deeper than that. So make sure you shop Hebrew, shop Israelite uh, with your brothers and sisters. And we're talking to our sister Dolores today. Greetings, sis. How are you doing today? I am blessed, highly favored, and not complaining about nothing. Wow. Well, we are so glad to have you back here on an individual basis. We want to talk about what it is that you're doing. Also, what you are offering for Yah's approved apparel. First off, for those who did not hear the last program, why don't you talk to us about what Torah means for you and what Torah has done in your life? Um, Torah is the center of my life. It is what I use in order to gauge where I go, how I, what I, how I interact with people, how I view myself and everybody else. It's just the center of everything for me. Um, it, it's meant to be a guide and a blueprint, and that's what it is for me. That's what Torah is for me. And to go any deeper is to just get into details. So that's that's it in a nutshell. That's what Torah is to me. Wow. So tell us how long have you been walking in what we call the truth? Um little little about a year, a little over a year. A little over a year. Yeah, a little over a year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So before that were you in any other religion? I was a Christian. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you grow up as a Christian? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wonderful. Well, that is good to hear because um, I believe that as we are awakened, um, Yah is allowing us to really notice the gifts that we can share amongst one another. And that's why we brought you here today. So um, as I mentioned before, you are in the mall for uh, Yah's Approved Apparel. So talk to us about your store in Yah's Approved Apparel. Well, right now I don't have a store in Yash Approved Apparel. What I have in there are my class, the links for my classes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I haven't set up my store link yet. It will be there eventually. But um, right now my focus is on classes. And my first class is quilting, um, a beginning quilting at that, hand piece quilting. And, and the, um, the thing that I've, I've learned um, is that our ancestors never did anything without a purpose. And quilting in its, in, in its original form was meant to reuse that parts of things that were no longer usable. So like if a shirt wore out, then they would take the pieces that didn't, that were worn out, remove them and then use them to make a quilt. Mm -hmm. And then now that quilt now provided a purpose to keep warm or um, for whatever it, you know, whatever it is, they would use, reuse everything. And so um, with that in mind, I want to teach the skills of quilting so that they can that we can learn and, and do and reuse and and save money because these things these things can save you a lot of money in the long run um another skill that i will be teaching is sewing and and a sewing is another thing i know when i was coming up with my son i saved a lot of money making his own clothes i remember walking in the store one day to go get him some summer clothes and one outfit was ten dollars and i walked out the store and I walked to the fabric shop and for ten dollars I brought ten yards of fabric and from that ten yards of fabric I made him ten outfits for ten dollars. Wow. Okay. So I, I, this is the kind of thing that we need to share with each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have all of these gifts. I've been blessed to, to sew and knit and crochet, uh, quilt, I paint, I, um, I, I can build things, I, I dabble in woodworking as well and um, I want to just start passing on I'm getting to an age where I'm, I'm supposed to be in a place to give wisdom, pass wisdom on to the next generation. Yeah. And so that's where I want to go. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, sister, why do you think that um, we have lost some of the basic skills like sewing? Now, quilting, I think that's a bit elaborate and that may be something that we may have done with um, 
you know, our, our uh, grandparents or something like that. I personally didn't learn quilting, um, but I remember um, learning how to sew. Why do you think that we've lost that basic skill? First of all, because the family has been dis 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 fractured. Mm -hmm. The family has been fractured. Normally these things are passed down, not from mother to daughter, mm -hmm. but from grandmother to granddaughter. That's mm -hmm. usually how things are passed down. It mm -hmm. does, it's not given to the next generation. The next generation is taught what they need to know in order to live. Mm -hmm. The second generation gets time to sit down and mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. So a lot, our family has been fractured. Mm -hmm. And, and grand, grandmothers and grandparents are not at home. They're still working. Mm -hmm. So when the children used to be at home with the grandparents learning, I learned how to sew under my grandmother. I learned how to crochet under my grandmother. All mm -hmm. right. But my mother was working yeah. when her grandchildren were young. Yeah. So she didn't have the time to sit with them like my grandmother sat with me. And that's mm -hmm. why we lost it. And wow. that's usually what happens. It, it's not one generation, two generations. By the time, I see now my mother's no longer here. So if mm -hmm. I have grandchildren, she wouldn't even be able to teach it to her great grandchildren. Oh, you know what I'm saying. So this is what happened. The cycle got broken. It was broken, in before by by the white man in when we were in slavery. They literally tore our families apart. Mm -hmm. But we're losing these skills because the family is fractured, and we have to build that structure back up, and we have to become a part of the village, and hand it down. So is that okay? So how how do we really actually get it back. I mean, because it's one thing to say, just do it. But I think so many interests are elsewhere, of course, in our community as, as we are building, I think it may be a little bit easier because we have a different focus than the quote black community. Mm -hmm. you know, we're worried about, I, I, there's a lot of things they're concerned with, but um, us as Israelites, like how do we really like get it back? Well, we get it back like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. We start, we start, mm -hmm. we start in the beginning. We start um, with beginning classes. Those that are interested come in. We start building an infrastructure of education. Mm -hmm. All right, because this is about education. It's mm -hmm. not only just skills. We're educating and equipping with skills. It's the same way that, um, and I don't, I, I don't want to get too far off, but I know our, our ancestors, when they first came out of slaves, all the craftsmen were slaves. Right. All, all the skill belonged to the slaves. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and so what they systematically did was took that from them. And mm -hmm. in the same way it took it from them, they took the, they took the skills that we had from us, the women. And so we, we had to go back and learn those things. And now we have to turn around and start instilling those things in the next generation. Wow. And we start with classes. We start with classes. Take the time out, sit down, learn. Now, once you get the skill, you can turn around and pass it down to your family, but you got to get the skill first. Right, right. So um, in these upcoming times and the things that we're about to go through, how important do you think it is for us to learn these basic skills that we've lost? Uh, first of all, I, 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 in my first, in my, my other interview, I said, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him the fish, he can feed himself. Mm -hmm. So my thing is teach them to do it for themselves. And once they get it, they can apply it any way they want to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to sew and from sewing, I learned how to quilt. All right. I learned how to knit and crochet. And I used to make, I used to have, um, used to sell what I used to make. It's a, it's not only a skill. It's also a way to, to get a um, second income coming in. You can help feed your family. the The word says that the 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 wealth the the riches of the the wealth of the the wicked are stored up for the righteous. Yeah, the wealth okay. of the the wealth of the wicked are laid up for the righteous. Right. So, we the righteous take our wares and sell them to the wicked and get their money back into our community. Mm. Huh. <laughs> well, you know what? We have to continue to. I believe come out of her in order to yes. realize what we should be coming into. If we're coming out of something, we're definitely supposed to be going into something. Right. And those original ways that Yah has um, created for us, um, this is this is definitely a part of it. You know, this is a part of building um, because quilting. We'll talk about quilting for a second. Um, quilting has many different 
factors to it. I mean, when, you, when you're doing quilting, I think before, now don't quote me, but it, hasn't it been used to tell stories? Yes, it is exactly has been. And that's what I was going to bring up next. It used to tell story, family history. It was even used to, to draw maps mm -hmm. to get out of slavery. Right. And it was it was it was the use of quilts that were used to help them help runaway slaves find their way to freedom in the north. Right. And there were blocks that um, spoke certain things to tell you where to go. Um, I, I, I've been doing a little history about that, like the drunken path. And the, and um, there's a couple of other ones um, um, that tell you where to go, how to go about rivers, about where the rivers are, about the location of certain trees, about what fields you're going to pass, about landmarks and stuff like that. And that's what they were used for. Mm -hmm. um, they were used for a period like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the stories came down, they put them into quilts, and then you had a story. Wow. A lot of history was written in the quilts because they would they would take their their language was taken from them. Mm -hmm. Their writing was taken from them, but their mm -hmm. artist, their creative spirit wasn't taken from them. So using what they had, they put it they put it in, in cloth. Well, isn't that amazing? Um, because, you know, I go to estates. Well, I haven't in a while. Uh, that's a whole nother story. Um, but I would go to estate sales and I would I would see things like that. I would see quilts and I would see different um things that we don't really consider important anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and quilts are quite expensive. Like I, I look, I looked at, um, where did I look? I looked um, to the merchants online in South Carolina in, on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And I saw some quilts like upwards of $4,000. Yeah, depending on how big it is. Like this little quilt that I got back here. Yeah. This would retail around five, $600 if I was gonna sell it Goodness easily. Goodness easily five or six i would have to sit down i didn't do it to sell it mm -hmm. but if i sat down and i and i um calculated the labor that it took me to put it that alone would put it about 13 fourteen hundred dollars just the labor wow easily for it's 13 fourteen hundred dollars so it, it would retail in that neighborhood yeah because because it's a labor intensive um skill right now if someone wants to start um should they be afraid? <laughs> like if you have no sewing lessons or anything like that. Should no, they that's why, this is the reason why I'm starting my quilting class as a hand quilting class. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody can use a needle and thread. Okay. If you can use a needle and thread, mm -hmm. you can take this class and you can learn the basics. Mm -hmm. If you want to take it to the sewing machine after you learn the basics, that's on you. But I want to teach the skill so you learn how to put together a quilt, how to take it to the to the to the point where you finish the quilt and now it's a usable item you can use it to cover a baby when they're sleeping you can use it to put it on lap you can use it to put it around your shoulders a usable item wow and as long as you can use a needle and thread okay you can take this course and learn how to quilt it is it is set up for the beginner beginner you have no clue maybe you've seen a quilt have no idea how to put it together, what goes into it, how it goes together. This is the course to take. <laughs> so this is also, I, I guess we definitely need to mention this. This is for men and women, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. This is not a gender specific uh, class. It's, it's not even age specific. Right. If a child is old enough to sit and concentrate and, and, and follow the directions, children can do it too. Mm -hmm. my, my, my suggestion, 10 years and older, mm -hmm. um, my suggestion, but you have prodigy children that can handle it younger than that, but I can tell it the age. Yes, you know, do. You do. And it's an excellent thing for a child to learn. It's an excellent thing for a child to learn. Uh -huh. So it would be good for, um, like we have a lot of parents now that have decided to homeschool. Would this be good for them as a course? Yes, it would be. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing that I like about quilting. You can teach the word in quilting. You mm. can teach family values in quilting. You can you can take it. It, it, it incorporates family time. Mm -hmm. You can spend time together doing something that's mm -hmm. going to create something usable later. Mm -hmm. Now you've got memories. You've got lessons. You can give wisdom during that. Yeah, it's an excellent thing to do. Excellent. Wow. So... Okay, so you've got the quilting class and the sewing class. And again, this is going to be, um, let's see, where is your, your link is going to be in the mall? Yes, the link is in the mall. The link okay, is in the link mall. link is in the mall. Um, so talk to us about, I guess, the schedule, um, the time schedule, and maybe pricing. 
they have um, this class, this beginner class, because it is a beginner class, this is priced at $30 for the course. Okay. All right. There are six six lessons in this course, an hour each one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to break it down to an hour each one for one a week mm -hmm. because you got to have time to learn to do what you've learned. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're going to learn a set of skills. You're going to practice a set of skills. And when you come back, you got to learn the next set of skills mm -hmm. and practice those and come back. And when you get finished, every skill builds on the next skill. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to the last two lessons, you'll be putting it all together so you can finish your item. Wow. Okay. So how many lessons is it in all? Six. Six lessons in all. And you said $30. Right. And the course will be how long? It'll be six sessions, six weeks. So, okay. So once every week. Once a week. Right. Okay. Do you have the specific day carved out already? Um, I want to do it on a Monday, probably June 20th is okay. when I want to like to start. June 20th. Okay. Uh, the time, the time frame would be seven to eight o'clock. Seven to eight o'clock. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time, yes. Okay. Eastern Standard Time, yes. Okay, and then this is going to be uh, Zoom or what is it? It's going to be on Zoom. It'll okay. be a Zoom class, yes. Okay, it is on Zoom. Okay. Well, if uh, those that are listening are interested, of course, you can go on the YAS Approved Apparel website and check out all of the vendors that are there. Again, shop with your people. It's deeper than just shopping Black and buying Black. You are buying and shopping Israelite with your brothers and sisters. Um, so if they go on there, they can definitely look up the information. But if they would like to connect with you, what is the best way to do that? Okay. <clears throat> well, the best way to get in contact with me through the mall is to check the link, which will give you a get, send you send me an email, and then I will send all the information to you through um, through that email. That's the best way. Um, my email, or you can email me directly. My email is DJG Creations at gmail.com um and you can get get through get to me you can also um go to my facebook page which is djg creations uh, on facebook and it's the same thing on instagram um you can hit me up with a message in any one of those and i'll send you out um the information for the course so that you can get registered okay now i remember when we were talking before you said that for certain courses or something that you're doing if i'm not mistaken they should take the beginner's sewing class first. Was that correct? Right. For, when we do our sewing classes, the sewing classes, anybody who has never sewed before needs to take the intro to sewing class. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Vanille is, is, is going to do sewing classes. When I do my sewing classes, it'll probably be garment construction, um, pattern making. You have to know how to sew already before you get to that class. Mm -hmm. So um, anybody who is interested in learning how to sew mm -hmm. with a sewing machine, Mm -hmm. Need to take Sister Corinne's intro to sewing class. Okay. Take that. The class is free. That class is free. Um, and you need to come, come with your come with your expectations, come with your 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 hat on to learn, and you will walk away with some usable skills that you can turn around and use in the next set of classes that are available. Mm, wow, that's that's important because there are a lot of us that have sewn but haven't sewn in quite some time me personally right. so you know it's not like you know <laughs> yeah you might have a sewing machine and haven't opened it up in the last 15 20 years so you need to pull your sewing machine out get your manual out take the intro class and learn how to use your machine so that then you can turn around and take it to the next level and <laughs> and make stuff <laughs> well listen it's worse than that because i found this sewing machine on the side of the road and i took it to the people who do sewing classes and they said this is a perfectly good machine so i was like yes but i never did anything with it um well, i think i'm intimidated by my sewing machine i do sew by hand not like garments or anything but for instance i have some skirts that need repair or i know how to hem that kind of thing but yes the sewing machine last time i used it i was in home ec and that was no, that's not true. That's not true. I did take a sewing class, but I'm still intimidated by the sewing machine. So yes, I definitely would need the beginner's class. Yeah. And, and that's the, the, the title of the class is intro to sewing, learn your machine. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot do your sewing if you don't know your machine. And, and, it's, yeah. and it's designed, the class is designed to take the fear out of being intimidated by your machine. You learn how to thread your machine and do a bobbin and you learn how to sew a straight seam you learn how all the different the the, the different stitches that your machine has and mm -hmm. then you learn um, some basic um uh techniques for sewing right 
that you'll need in order to go into the next. It's 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 perfect for a person like who's saying like you. I got a saw machine. I ain't looked at it. I'm afraid to go looking at it. This is that's the course for them. That is yeah. the course. And one of the things that happens with Sister Corinne's course, a lot of times I pop in uh, to give. Um, to give little tidbits and stuff. I pop in every now and then. Do a little cameo appearance. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, that's good. You know, and I mentioned garment repair. Is there a place where they can learn to do that? Because I have two skirts, they're cotton, and um, they have some holes. I don't know what happened, but they have some holes, you know, just wear and tear. And sometimes we have these garments and we don't necessarily want to discard them. We just want to fix them. So is there a place to learn that? Um, well, now that you mentioned that, that could be a class that I do in the future because I do alterations. Okay. I do, I do alterations. Okay. Um, I only do those locally. I, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't do the outside of my area mm -hmm. um, because it's just a bit much trying to do that outside my area. But that's an excellent. I like that. That's an excellent idea. I will definitely dig into that to see how to put together a class to teach people how to repair their garments. Um, yes. Going seam, a button. A, something coming loose. I mean, I've seen so many things and you just, it's not difficult. Right. But again, you, you got to learn your sewing machine. Got to learn, <laughs> you gotta your, learn your sewing machine before you do gar garment repair. <laughs> exactly. Or if you're like me, like I will go and drop my stuff off. And it's sad because when you look at what the people are doing, you can definitely do it. You can do like, it yourself. You could, like I have a lady, um, probably about 10 minutes from me, little Asian lady. But she fixes my clothes because, you know, when you lose weight, you don't necessarily want to throw right. away your clothes or whatever. You just want it to be altered. Right. That lady, every time I take my stuff to her, she is so on point. And she just, you know, it's it's just old school, pinning it up and sewing it. Yes. And that, and see how you said that just then? <laughs> You're taking it to her. You learn that skill. You can do it yourself. And then you can turn around and teach it to your grandchildren. And I should. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then they will have a skill that they can turn around and pass on to their, get their grandchildren. Absolutely. I think that is very key. And I think, you, like you said, that's very important because if we're not passing down these skills to our grandchildren, what is it that we're passing down? We already know we're passing down debt. We already know we're passing down sin and bad behaviors. We already know that we're passing down uh, bad eating habits and all these different things. What can we do to turn those things around? And oftentimes people think about financial wealth. And of course the Bible talks about a good man, you know, leaving the, the you know, wealth to his children and an inheritance to his children is what it says. But um, wealth and inheritance could also be in the form of these types of skills that you're teaching them because uh, they can definitely bring an income in, like you said and not have to ship their stuff off to the Asian lady like That's me, right. you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, and, and you know what? That is the premise behind um, putting together these classes. When I think about how much um, I was able to save, how much money I was able to save. Um, I remember when my son was in school, he was eight or nine years old and he came home and he says, mommy, he says to me, mommy, I need an outfit for the for my school play tomorrow. Oh. Tomorrow? No, I need an outfit for my school play. That's how he said it. I said, okay, baby, no problem. When do you need it? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow? It's 7 o'clock in the evening, and he's telling me he needs it the next day for school. Mm. If I didn't have the skills, I wouldn't have been able to do that for him. I made him a nice little vest, a little hat, and he was good to go because it was a, a black history program. How old is he now? I want to talk oh, to him. 34. Oh, okay. No, he's not coming on camera. He was specifically, he was specific about staying off camera. <laughs> yeah, he used to, he used to, he, he put my skills to work. He, I remember we were in a store one time and he saw a jacket he liked and he turns to me, he says, mommy. I said, yes, baby. He says, can you make this for me? And I looked at the jacket. It was a simple little jacket. I said, yeah, I can make that for you. And, and the jacket was $25. It cost me five dollars to make it. It cost me five dollars. Let me say that again. The jacket was twenty five dollars. It cost me five dollars to make it. This is what I'm talking about. And nobody would have known that I made it if he didn't tell him. Mm, mm, mm. That's the kind of skills that you want to have. Like the yes. outfit that I have. I made this. All right. Wow. I made this outfit. Okay. This is just modification of something that came, but I made it my own. 
you can do that. If I walked into the store, if you walked into the store and went to purchase this, you could pop off forty, fifty dollars. This cost me ten. Well, you know, you 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 you're, you're speaking truth because as we talk right now, I don't know why I forgot this, but you know, my great grandmother, she used to sew stuff for us like it was nothing. Like yes. I remember my cousin and me, we had these dresses that she made for us, and they were called our party dresses because mm -hmm. every year we wore them for our birthday parties. Right. And I don't know what happened to my party dress today. I'm kind of like, oh Lord, what happened to my party dress? But Yes. I mean, and I remember it was like a thick material mm -hmm. and they were similar, but they weren't the same, but she was always sewing like it was nothing. And she had one of those old school machines, like the, the black and the wood and all, you know, mm -hmm. and she just, you could hear that thing. Wah, 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 wah. You know, she would just be sewing away yes. everything. Yes. But I, I, mean, I think about my grandmother. I know my grandmother who taught me to sew. She raised 16 children. Oh, you don't go to the store and buy clothes for 16 children. No, you don't. You 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 make clothes and hand them down. Yes. And you got they got to be made well enough to handle the wear and tear to be handed down. That's the kind of skill that we're talking about teaching. Wow. All of the clothes that I made my son when he was young, I was able to give them to my nephew. Mm. They were in that kind of they were in excellent condition cuz you, you when you give y'all praise for what you do and you give him glory through what you do it will last it will speak to him his praise it will speak to his praise and that's yeah. how i operate i've always operated even when i was a christian it was always about the glory mm -hmm. glory to the father it's always been that way well we know the bible says your gift will make room for you yes, and yes. You, you'd be surprised what he has in store for you you'd be surprised yes. like what uh, extra he'll add on to your skills yeah. when you're not doing it for the world but you're doing it for him yes. and also the people that he will couple you with to yes. uh, do greater things like what we're doing with sister corinne here right. uh, and yaz approved apparel with all of the different merchants in there willing yeah. to share their gifts with the fellow israelite brothers and sisters so it is definitely a great thing and yaz is definitely approving it through amen. yaz approved apparel <laughs> amen and um like you said, you just said that your gift will make room for me. I can't think of how many times I threw together some stuff and sold it and had enough money to do what I needed to do. Wow. Fill the gap. I can't tell you how many times. And I want that for those who want it for themselves. Yes. <clears throat> I yes. want that for those who want it. If you want it for yourself. And one of the things that um, this quilting class will teach, because it's a hand sewing class, mm -hmm. it'll teach you patience. Mm. it'll teach you tenacity mm. all right it'll teach you um it'll teach you how to persevere mm. it'll, and it'll it'll give you a sense of accomplishment because you've done something with your hand and you're going to take it to completion wow right and then now you have something that you can show somebody else this is what i learned this is what i did and once you do it you know you can do it again if you did it once you can do it again wow that is amazing now you have that beautiful quilt behind you now, is that a quilt with scripture? What's on there? I can't. That's, that's scripture on it. Yes. It's, oh. I got it. I got it flipped backwards, but it is scripture. <laughs> okay. So, is it is it not for sale? This one is not for sale. Okay. That one is actually the, the title of this quilt is Praise Quilt. That's that's what it is. That's the title of it. Okay. And I have several different scriptures on here and every single one is given praise to the most high every single one there's first chronicles 16 and 34 oh give thanks to the lord for his for he is good for his mercy endures forever um you got joel 2 and 26 praise the name of the lord your god who has dwelt wondrously with you all of these are scriptures of praise all of them and and um I, I, I I'm gonna tell you the story behind this. I was going to work mm -hmm. and I was driving down, I was driving down um, on Atlantic Avenue and, and if anybody in, in New York, you know Atlantic Avenue and I was coming around Atlantic Avenue and I got this vision. I had to pull over because I got this vision. Wow. And I saw this, just the way you see it now, I saw this, right? I had no clue how to do it. Mm -hmm. When I tell you no clue, this was actually the first quilt that I made. I could sew. Oh. I knew how to sew, but I didn't know how to quilt. So I had absolutely no idea how to do this. I had never painted on fabric because this, this is painted into here. This is not pretty. This is hand painted. All of this I painted by hand and I saw it and I was like, I saw this, but I was like, 
okay, you want me to do this, Father, but I don't know how to do that. I said, I can sew. I can, I can get to the quilt part. I mean, I can figure that out. Right. How am I supposed to get this done? And do you know, two days later, I was watching a, a show on HGTV. And and I think her name was Carol Duvall, because this is a long time. This quilt, this quilt is rather 2005, I think. Okay. And she came on. She had a guest who showed you how to paint words on fabric. Two days later. Two days later. And so, of course, I took that, that, that knowledge and I did this quote. It took me the better part of a month to do it. But look at look at look at look at the lord he gave me the vision and the vision it's so perfect that is wonderful i would not have even known that it was painted on i was going to ask you is it needlepoint or what is it no this is all painted this is painted on painted on and um and it's quilted i quilted it the quilting i i tied it because of the the paint i couldn't do a all over quilting so yeah. i tied it together and um yeah it's not for sale. That was a serious labor of love. <laughs> a love for a love for yourself, though. That's a good thing. You, yeah, you, no. Well, it was a love for the father because right. I probably wouldn't have done it if it was for me. That's it probably right. wouldn't have got done. It That's probably right. wouldn't. But I'm not saying you're loving done. yourself by keeping it. You didn't sell yes. it off. You did keep yes. it. Wow. And I bring it out every now and then because when you get a vision, you can get your vision. Your vision can come to life. And that, that's the lesson that I do when, when um, I'm, my cousin just asked me to start teaching young girls. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my things is always, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is my, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Example, I got a vision and here's the finish of the vision. It took some work, but it could wow. get done. Wow. And that's, 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 that's like the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. me. Right? Exactly. exactly. Wow, that is amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to the many testimonies and the pictures that we'll see of people and their creations, what they've done, their, you know, their testimony of how, why well, I, I couldn't sew or whatever. Now I learned, you know, because our people are truly amazing. And of course, uh, powered by Yah, we are just so amazing and we do so many things. Um, we are the ones that are making this world go round, you know. Um, so it'll just be so interesting to see what everybody comes up with. I mean, me, myself, I need to take the class. I need to take all the classes. Um, <laughs> well, you know what, here's what I'm going to suggest. These classes are, um, Lord willing, and he is, all classes are, um, will come back around again. So take what you need now and come back and pick up later. That's how I always look at it. Um, I, I sat on this. This course, this quilting course, I sat on it for a while. Sister Corinne's been bugging me for over a year. Could you, could you, could you, could you, could you? <laughs> so <laughs> when we um, decided to start our class curriculums for this year, I decided I was going to do this. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I really am looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, real quick, before I, one of the blocks, and you're going to choose your own fabric, but one of the blocks we're going to learn, all right, in the very first quilting class, and this is the other block that we're going to learn. You're going to choose your own fabric in the other quilting class. And um, this is so that you can start learning your basic techniques, you know. And then mm -hmm. when we get finished, we'll, we'll go to the next technique, which is to put sashings on. Wow. And, um, we'll learn how to do the binding. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn how to do all of that in the first class. In the first wow. class. Now, is it going to be... Um, a live class and then let's say I missed something and then you'll be able to send me the link so I can watch it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Perfect. That's yes. Good. And, and if you like, if you, if you pay for the class and you miss it, I will send you the link so that you can get the work because there's work that's going to be done. Right. You have to have get done before the next class. So you need to see that so that you can get the work done for okay. the next class. Yes. Now, what if, what if I am working on something and we don't meet except for once a week. So should I have to wait until the next week to get help or can I? No, oh, no, no, no. You can reach out to me. Oh, okay. That information will be given in the class, how to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns about the class, about the lesson that you have. Well, that's good. That's good because, you know, people might get caught up or stuck or something and then yeah, they'll, no. they'll be behind or whatever. No, no, no. I have, I have it uh, set up in, uh, it's in the class that how you can get in contact with me if you have any issues or you get stuck or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Well, sis, if do you have anything else that you want to share with the people? Um, let them know whatever it is they need to know outside of what we already talked about so they can get get cracking and get well, ready to pick this class. Yeah, don't let procrastination stop you from going forward. Procrastination is one of the biggest enemies our people have. They stop, well, maybe when, I'll do it when, or one day. No, today is the day. Mm -hmm. Now is the time. Mm -hmm. If you don't make the effort to do it, it won't get done. It won't get done, and then you'll be lacking in what you should be passing down to, yes. not just your future generations, but also others, because we yeah. do come in contact with others mm -hmm. that also need to hear and see what it is that we know you know well, we're all part of the village we're yeah. we're a part of the village yeah the, I, I personally this is just me every child belongs to me i'm responsible for every child i'm responsible for that child reaching their potential whatever mm -hmm. whatever y'all put into that child i'm responsible to make sure if that child needs some encouragement just to know that i can do it they believe sometimes a child just needs to know that somebody else believes that they can do it. And because they don't want to disappoint that person, they'll yeah. give it their best effort. That's what we have to do. Right. That's so, what we have to do. Well, we no, have to continue to encourage one another. Yes. And we thank you for the encouragement to actually reach back into our roots and what it is that we should be doing mm -hmm. uh, for ourselves and also to glorify the Father. We thank you for coming on. I want to leave you with our scripture, which is Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. I'm Sister Cece, thank you so much. And we will talk with you all again soon.